Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about five ways you can make more time in your day and try to get as much out of it to be as productive as possible, enjoy as much as you can. This is whether you're a student or you're working, here are some things that I like to do in order to habit hack and be more productive and get more time in. So there's only 24 hours in the day, you can only do so much. We start with waking up, trying to cook breakfast, then eating, then brushing our teeth, and then maybe some of us have to commute. With COVID, there might not be a commute and we get to work from home, so we're not wasting as much time driving and traveling. But then we move on and we have to maybe get back from home, cook again, work out, exercise. We wanna hang out with friends. We also wanna watch TV, watch YouTube. We also have some work to do or study. And all of that needs to fit into 24 hours. So here's a few ways that I try to reduce my working hours by chunking things together and making it more productive. So first things first, as a medical student, sometimes we have to write essays. I'm sure other students always have to write essays. So these are two things that I like that really speed up this process. One is dictation tools. If you ever have been in Google Docs or OneNote, there is a dictation tool where you just click the button and you start speaking and it basically starts typing out what you are speaking. So I use this to very, very quickly write reflection essays that I might have due in med school. Um, and this takes me probably half the time. If it would take me 30 minutes to normally write an essay, this probably ends up taking only 15 or 10 minutes because I can speak much faster and I have somebody basically, you know, Google Docs basically writing the essay for me. And then I also use Grammarly with that and that is just an add-on app that is constantly checking my grammar, my spelling, where commas might be missing. And this is super great because all of this reduces the amount of time that I have to sit and think about things that might not be as important as doing my studying for medical topics rather than writing a reflective essay. And on top of that, this is great practice for future doctors because most of the times hospitals have dictation tools and you will see a lot of doctors end up typing their notes because that also, they end up dictating their notes because that saves them a lot of time. So I think this is great practice to reduce your time now, but also to get you ready to start dictating your notes when you go into the hospital and are a resident or a third year med student on your rotations and you have to type notes out for the attendings. So that's tip number one. Number two, email batching. Now, I know that I do this all the time. Whenever I wake up, I open up my email and the moment I hear a ding, I go and check my email. And that probably happens, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 50 to 100 times a day. I hear the ding on my email, I've gotten something in my inbox and the automatic response is to go and check it. But what that does is it interrupts my workflow. It has me checking emails that I don't need to check. There's nothing emergent. So what I like to do is I like to email batch. And what this means is checking your email only maybe two or three times a day and getting out um, all of those, you know, 10 or 50 emails that you got in the span of those five to 10 minutes rather than checking every single time an email comes through because that ends up taking you way less time rather than checking every single minute, interrupting your workflow, paying attention to emails that probably don't matter. So try to email batch. I try to check my email once in the morning, once at noon and once at the afternoon mark and then call it a day because otherwise I could end up checking and checking and rechecking and that's just wasting my time. So email batching, super important. Give it a try. Try to discipline yourself to not check all the time and see if it does anything good for you. Good. Number three, grocery shopping. So I am not a big fan of grocery shopping. I don't like to go to the grocery store, walk around, think about what I need to buy, try to find it. It is, I feel like a big, big time waster. So what I have started using is a um, an app called Instacart where I can basically order my groceries online within the span of five to 10 minutes and then I hit the button and I can get the groceries delivered directly to my house. I know there are other options where you can order your groceries and go and pick them up, but I'm a big proponent of this. I like to order my groceries once on the weekend 
and have them ready for the week and not have to spend hours upon hours grocery shopping, looking through the grocery store. And on top of that, I most of the time end up buying things that I don't need. So that takes a big bite out of my wallet. So give it a go. Try something like Instacart where you just order online and they bring it straight to your door or something like Safeway where you order online and you can go pick it up from the store. They have it ready and packaged for you because I have truly found that this saves me you know, at least one to two hours per week. And if we add that up to 52 weeks per year or more, and then one to two hours every week, that is, I would say over 50 hours of my life that I have saved by not walking around grocery shopping, getting distracted, searching for products. Um, so that has been a lifesaver for me. Now, I know some people love to grocery shop. They like to walk around the store, see people, see the different products. Um, so it's not for everyone, but I have found it super helpful. The next thing for me is meal prepping. So the way that I do this is I typically order my groceries on Instacart on the weekends and then I will spend one to two hours maximum on my weekend meal prepping for the entire week. So I will prepare typically two different meals, one for lunch, one for dinner, and breakfast might be something light or quick that I don't necessarily have to prepare. Um, so I like to meal prep for every single day of the week so that I have my meals ready, separated out in different Tupperware and just ready to pop into the microwave or take to go with me if I'm going into the hospital. And that way I am once again saving time because otherwise I would have to cook my breakfast every morning, which probably would take 30 minutes to an hour, then eat it, then cook my lunch another 30 minutes to another, uh, an hour, then cook my dinner another 30 minutes to an hour. So in reality, if you add up all of those times that we spend cooking brand new meals every day, that can add up to probably three hours a day or more. And if you add it up in terms of the entire week, that is a lot of hours that are being eaten up by meal prepping. Whereas this way, I just spend two hours on the weekend cooking for the entire week and I have everything ready to go. Now, one bad thing about this is that a lot of the meals end up being repetitive throughout the week. So if you are a person that needs something new every single day, this may not be the method for you, but I have no problem with that. I could eat the same thing for pretty much a week or two and be good, but this definitely has been a big hack for me. And on a final note, tip number five, killing two birds with one stone. And what I mean with this is I've often been the type of person that needs to focus on one thing at a time. Like if I am working out, I am only working out. If I am eating dinner, I'm only eating dinner. But recently I have found that I can batch two habits together and be able to accomplish more in that same amount of time than I would have before where I would be doing one thing. Now I'm doing two things at the same time. So for example, I uh, recently have started doing working out, right? So I will get on the bike, do some cardio or something. And while I'm doing that, I will at the same time be doing my Anki cards which I used to put off. But now that I'm doing these two things together, I feel much more productive and much better about it because I'm doing Anki, which is not my favorite thing, and working out, which is something that I like, but just could never find the time for. So when I merge them together now, you know, in my one hour, I am in a sense accomplishing, you know, X amount of Anki cards and also X amount of cardio. And it feels great to know that I'm not taking up two hours for those things, but just one hour. Um, so that's one example. Another example is, if you have a really hard time like I do with getting Anki done, it is just so mundane for me to study those flashcards. I will batch it with another habit that I really like to do. So something that is pleasurable to me. And one of those things is I like to go to the hot tub or the pool and I find that super relaxing and enjoyable. And uh, so what I do is I go to the hot tub, I bring my phone or my iPad and I will, while I'm hanging out at the hot tub, something I enjoy at the same time, do Anki. And that uh, once again is killing two birds with one stone and it allows me to be more motivated for Anki because the hot tub gets me excited. So if you find that there are things hard for you to do, try to find another habit that you do enjoy doing or something fun and hack them together so that you can get them done at the same time and mask the boringness of Anki with the fun of the hot tub. 
So there we go guys, those were my five habit hacks that I have recently implemented and really enjoy. If you have any other hacks, please, please drop them below. I can always learn and I'm sure others can too. If you have any comments, questions, drop them below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.